Hello, welcome back to the Bugle Easel tutorial series. Today we're going to deal with uh, all of the interface elements that we haven't dealt with in the primary um, control panel. Let's start with the MIDI connections. These are all pretty straightforward, so we can whistle through these. Velocity allows us to play a really soft note and a really loud, uh, loud note. And as I play the key quieter and quieter, and there's, the, there's the bass note. If I just gave it some standard regular output tone, that's its, that's its bass, that's its like foundation level. And then the increased velocity adds a modulation amount to that pitch. Don't forget, these control inputs are basically how much more do we add on to our base starting position. That's what we're really doing when we move this slider. Modulation wheel is similarly simple. There's my wheel going up and here's my wheel coming back down. And obviously, I'm doing all of this on pitch. There's my modulation wheel at the top and then coming back down. Finally, key follow. Now, key follow is quite shallow. This is the only one of the three that I think it's really worth spending any time talking about because we want to know how much of an effect um, this output jack is having. Well, it turns out to be roughly equivalent to about a semitone per octave. So we've just got this tone humming away in the background now with no modulation sources on it whatsoever. And having just played a C1 on the keyboard, that's the output, that's the control voltage currently being output by this key follow jack. And that turns out to increase the pitch of the tone by just over a semitone. It's kind of a sharp D flat. If I now uh, press C2, so C2 is the natural tone, there it is drop the key follow modulation back in and now we're about two, two and a half semitones, another octave up and we're now like three, three and a half semitones, there's C4 again naturally, there's your standard bass C4, drop your key follow in, you're up to about five flat semitones and then finally there's uh, about six semitones. It never really occurred to me to do it, but you could probably figure out the total octave span to uh, to have the key follow increase the control voltage by exactly one octave. It, it might it might be ten. Finally, we've got our random voltage generator. I've just set it to keyboard mode to start the uh, the demonstration with. And we've got four different output sockets. Now each one of these different output sockets generates a different random control voltage every time it's triggered. They all trigger at the same time, but they generate a different random voltage and you can use that for different modules. So let's start off nice and simple. Here's our base C tone. And as I increase my modulation, I'm gonna get a random sound, a random tone, a random amount of modulation. Every time I press a key on the keyboard, Pressing C2 here each time. So the note that we hear is never going to be lower than C2. Because the modulation effect is always adding to the current baseline control voltage. And with a setting round about here, our range is going to go from C2 to C3. That's all very well and good for static, like keyboard generated random voltages, but things get more interesting when we bring some kind of cycling process in. So if I turn it into pulsar instead, now every time the pulsar triggers, fires, we're gonna get a different random voltage. And what it's really cool to do is take two outputs from the same socket send one through the inverter. And now we've got the two different 
oscillators playing in opposite directions, but they're always playing random voltages. Now the pulsar and the sequencer, as far as the random voltage generator are concerned, are just delivery mechanisms, they're just firing the, uh, the random voltage generator. So both of these things currently being set to pulsar, there's, that, there's no difference. There it's stuck again. Now I take over the process by pressing my keys. But pulsar in the sequencer, <laughs> it's like torture, isn't it? Are actually having the same effect. The reason why we've got two different controls, obviously they can be timed differently. At the moment, the sequence, uh, the, the sequence is taking its timing off the pulsar, but it doesn't need to. If we fire that off the clock instead and make the clock really fast, then the pulse is still doing its thing, and the sequencer is doing its thing. Finally, the uh, purple output sockets, the word press, gives you some clue as to what these are. These are poly pressure. So if I take uh, an output from one of these and get my note going. So there's a regular C3 and press into the key. And just about up to the next C. So it's basically operating at the same range as the envelope generator gates are, it's basically like a, a one volt equivalent uh, when the when the poly pressure gate is fully open. So short and sweet one for you today. Uh, that's that section dealt with. In the next uh, video, we'll deal with the keyboard section, and that will be the all of the controls of the primary interface done. Hope you'll join me then. Thanks very much for watching.